It's becoming increasingly clear to me that the next generation of NFT blue chips is here. I think some very clear winners are starting to present themselves, and I personally am going to be placing my bets on these collections and holding them for the long term. If you're curious about what these collections are and my thoughts around them, stick around for the rest of this video. Make sure to check out my private Discord in the description below called Vinland. You can learn to be a great NFT trader or crypto trader in this Discord. You can learn to make money and navigate these markets in a safe way that you can make consistent profits and avoid getting wrecked. If you're interested, check out the link in the description below. So throughout 2021 and partially in 2022, we saw an insane meteoric rise of NFTs. We saw things selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars. Plenty of people got completely stupidly rich and some people got absolutely wrecked. And in my opinion, there's only two main strategies you should be following as an active participant of the NFT ecosystem. One, quick flipping, consistent profit taking. Two, very very few projects you should be holding on for the long term. So you have the quick flipping and then you have the, let's say, two to five projects that you really believe in for the long term. And you need to be objective around where you put your money into these long term collections. Be ruthless with your decision making when it comes to these decisions. Don't put your ETH in a bunch of random projects hoping to go to the moon because somebody on Twitter said X or Y. You need to make sure that you're doing your own research, taking a look at all these different factors and catalysts that could be in place and placing your bets accordingly. And so with the grand rise and fall of NFT projects, I think we're starting to really see the bear market winners. And if they're winning in the bear market, they're going to absolutely crush it in the bull market. So in this video today, I'm going to discuss where I'm placing my bets, which three to five collections am I going to be getting exposure to for the long run? And that's it. I'm not going to spread my capital and my bandwidth across too many collections. I'm going to quick flip for profits that I can roll into these certain collections. And that's it. I'm not going to overcomplicate things. So without further ado, let's hop straight into the three to four different projects that I am buying during this bear market. So the first collection today is going to be Meme Land. And this is no surprise for anybody who's been active on Twitter today. Meme Land, at least today, a recording of this video has seen an insane pump. Potatoes are now somewhere around 3.3 Ethereum each, and Captains are now above 6 Ethereum. Both have very, very low listings and super thin floors with crazy positive sentiment around the entire collection. So quick recap of the Meme Land ecosystem is one. They have the real MVPs, which is 420 NFTs. Right now, I think there's zero listed and they have a floor price of like 40 to 50 Ethereum. So incredibly expensive and not accessible for the vast majority of people. Then we have the potatoes, which is another 10K collection size, which was a free mint. Now they're sitting at above three ETH. Then we have the captains, which are also a 10K collection size and they're sitting at above six ETH. Then we have the treasure islands, which will be the next phase after reveal, which might be some sort of land play, some sort of metaverse play. Not 100% sure what the treasure islands are going to be. But then one of the most interesting parts I think of the entire ecosystem is going to be the meme token. So if you feel like you missed the boat on captains and potatoes and MVP and the entire meme lamb ecosystem, you can always just buy the token when that ends up getting released. This is going to be a common theme in a lot of different collections. As these collections succeed and gain more notoriety and get more popular, it's going to increasingly become more scarce and therefore price is going to continue to trend higher. Especially Especially when Ethereum is also trending higher. At the same time, the USD value behind this collection is absolutely skyrocket. So if you're not some sort of well, you don't have five extra grand to spend, you know, you're living paycheck to paycheck, whatever it is, you could always just bet on these different ecosystems and these different teams and founders through their token, which is definitely going to have a much lower barrier to entry than any of the NFT collections will ever have. But I think the meme token is going to be super exciting. It's going to power the entire universe, the entire ecosystem that they plan on building. It will be used for anything to do in the meme land ecosystem and most likely captains potatoes and treasure islands and the MVP collection are probably going to generate these tokens over time so holding these collections could be a great some sort of you know passive yield opportunity obviously if you live in the United States that could be complicated but regardless the meme token is incredibly exciting and I think one of the main driving factors behind all of the hype and speculation around meme land so obviously none of this is financial advice I'm just going to be sharing with you guys today what horses I am betting on for this race of the NFT ecosystem. The NFT ecosystem is incredibly ruthless, will chop up NFT investors and chop up project founders and different projects that don't succeed or know how to play at the attention game. Meme Land is crushing it in all of those different areas, and I genuinely think it's going to be a contender for A, a great long-term hold, but also B, a blue chip. To me, it's becoming more clear every day 
that liquidity is draining out of these mid-tier and shit-tier NFT projects and going straight into the more high conviction plays like meme land. Collections that people really, really believe in have competent founders. They're active on Twitter. They understand what the DJs want. They have a bunch of different catalysts coming up. There's a potential token. They're not also based in the US, which is incredibly bullish. They don't have to deal with all that sort of regulation FUD. So mid-tier NFT projects, your favorite NFT project, the fact is, is that most of them are going to fail and you need to be super harsh, objective, and ruthless with where you put your ETH. You need to take calculated bets based off of sentiment and a bunch of different factors. The fact is, is that 99% of projects are going to go to zero and the ones that win are going to absolutely skyrocket. And you don't want to be that guy who held onto everything that went to zero because you had some sort of blind faith and conviction in a project that isn't going anywhere. So if I can just be brutally honest with you guys about these collections in this video, I do not care if you purchase any of these NFTs. I am not looking to pump my bags whatsoever. I'm just trying to share where I'm putting my money and why I'm putting it where I am. Am. Obviously, none of this is financial advice, and you should absolutely do your own research, but I believe in these projects, therefore I'm putting my money where my mouth is, and that's my entire conviction. So the next collection that I am heavily invested into and plan on adding more to my stack is the Yuga ecosystem. Mutant apes, board apes, I don't own any board apes, I'm not that type of whale. Regardless, there is a very interesting play here, I think for the token ape, and I really think ape has two very strong narratives behind it, which could make it an incredibly strong contender for the next crypto cycle, and we could see very, very, very many X come from the ape coin itself so let's talk about that today so just like when it comes to meme land obviously the yuga ecosystem has gotten incredibly expensive over the last couple years and so there's not many different avenues you can take as a regular person to potentially get exposure into the yuga ecosystem but one of the best ways you can do that is to buy ape coin right now it's about four dollars a coin and you can go onto the website as long as you're not a part of the us or just use a vpn and you can stake your ape coin to earn more ape coin which is really exciting and a fun little mini game you can do to where you stake your ape coin maybe you buy a little bit every week you generate more ape coin you can claim that ape coin and then put it back into the pool so you end up getting like this compounding interest and so i think ape coin has two very strong narratives behind it one it is the coin that is going to power the entire yuga ecosystem which potentially means that ape coin could be used for many many different things which could put a lot of selling and potential buying pressure onto the coin itself i think the second narrative that makes ape coin a super attractive potential investment for myself is the very fact that it is a gaming coin essentially yuga is very heavy into the gaming ecosystem and when you take into account that skins in web 2 games like counter-strike and valorant etc have a 50 you know 100 billion dollar market there we could absolutely see cryptocurrencies that have gaming attached to it gaming utility behind it some sort of mass adoption element there decouple from the likes of bitcoin break away from the traditional markets and go on an absolute insane gaming metaverse nft cryptocurrency coin bull run and ape would be uniquely positioned to take advantage of those price movements because it a part of the yuga ecosystem b has support from tons of huge whales that hold bored apes and also c it has that gaming coin narrative there so what we're looking at right now is an ape coin staking calculator and what you can do is you can kind of just mess with these values right now i have a thousand ape staked in this calculator just to show you guys as an example and with a thousand apes staked at the current prices you're looking at about two hundred dollars a month let's say that you held a mutant if you held a mutant you got airdropped 2042 ape coin and so currently you're yielding about 900 dollars a month just from holding the nft so if you think about it why would a mutant or a board ape or someone sell their nft when they could just stake it and generate all of this extra income on a monthly basis it's an incredibly bullish indicator that this token is doing so well during this bear market sitting at around four dollars and so obviously most people can't afford a mutant so let's say you just put 500 ape in that's a hundred dollars a month let's just say you put 250 ape in that's fifty dollars a month you know and what's super interesting about this and it's a little bit ponzi but that's just how this coin works is you can stake this ape generate this a month claim this restake it and then you get that compounding interest element so mutants board apes the ape coin Kennel Club, you know, their new collection, the Codas, other deeds, all these different things are going to be incredibly exciting over the next couple of years. Yuga is leading the way. ApeCoin is incredibly bullish. And I could very well see and have a very high conviction play in ApeCoin to potentially make a huge, crazy run in the next cycle. All right, next up, we have the new kids on the block, Steady Stack Titans. And I'll briefly go over the collection, some statistics around it, and also the new Legends Mint. And we'll just briefly discuss my thoughts around the entire thing. So Steady Stack Legends, 
Legends is the new kit on the block with a very impressive floor price of around 3.5. Obviously, super thin listings here, 3.5. The next listing is 4.35, 1% listed. A ton staked for a long amount of time. Their new Legends Mint is coming out soon. And I've been a part of their Discord for a while. I hold three of these NFTs. I've seen what they have going on in their Discord. They have classes for traders every week. They have very professional traders, a very professional environment in general. It's just a really good networking opportunity for anyone who's looking to trade, make some sort of side income, and also potentially hold an NFT that's going to appreciate greatly in value. Obviously, they have seen a meteoric rise over the past couple months, past few months, but they have been around since the bull market in 2021. And so there's a lot of potential here and they have a lot to prove and their Legends Mint is going to be a very big supply and it was a very expensive mint. And so they're going to have a lot of different money to play with to potentially make this collection the next blue chip NFT. And so it'll be a very interesting project to continue to watch. I'm going to continue to hold mine and I have very high hopes for this collection in general. I hope they succeed in everything they want to do. They definitely have the funds to do it. But you know, some of the same things I've been talking about on this channel apply to this collection, Steady Stack collection as well. Active founders who understand the DGENs, who have utility, who have a great community, who have really cool art coming. All these things take place in the Steady Stack ecosystem, and that could very well mean they're going to be here for the foreseeable future. Also, with collections this early in their hype cycle, and they have so many plans, and they just got such a big influx of money, there could be so many different catalysts that could do great for this collection, its community, and its holders. Things like a token, things like added utilities, things like art Art refreshes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's so much opportunity here, I think, for this collection, and it's going to be incredibly interesting and an exciting moment for me as a holder to witness all of this go down. So my goal for this year and next year and the following years is to concentrate my liquidity, concentrate my capital in places that I really believe in, and that is only going to be, you know, anywhere from three to four to five projects. I don't have the mental bandwidth or the energy to track updates for n plus projects for 20 plus projects. Basically, every other project besides a very very small hand handful of these blue chips. Obviously, I don't think blue chips really exist in the NFT ecosystem outside of Yuga Labs, but some are going to win and going to emerge into that status eventually. I'm going to concentrate all of my energy, liquidity, capital in those select few projects, and everything else is going to be whitelist flipping into USD or whitelist flipping into rolling ETH into getting more ape coin or meme coin or adding to my blue chip stack, whatever it is. But you really have to be mindful of where you put your ETH into how many different projects, what your strategy is, what your portfolio size is, how much money you have coming in on a monthly basis, how much money you want to invest, how much money you want to save, how much risk you want to take, etc, etc. There's so many opportunities here in this space, but there's also so many risks and scams and craziness that you can fall into that you need to be super objective, super ruthless, super unemotional with where you put your money and you're going to be just fine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to check out my private discord in the description below. You can learn to navigate this market in a successful way. You can get a ton of whitelist raffles to make some money. You can talk to me personally. You can game with me. You can check out our website and track your whitelist and get your loot boxes and farm your Vinland tokens, etc. There's so much to do in my private discord check out the link in the description below and i will see you guys in the very next video peace